Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello viewers, students back home in the OED session. Welcome to this session again as a part of the continuation of cell division in which we said we are looking at mitotic division because like we said last time, cell division is actually a representation of the whole cycle. So today, as a continuation from what we looked at, if you can check in the background of the slide, we have um, mitotic index. Now the question should be, what's an index? Could they be figures? Could they be fair representations? Could they represent something like a simple calculation of a representation of the whole picture? Two, we are also be, we are going to be able to look at what if things go wrong when cell division does not occur in the expected way? Where do we head to? Do we constantly have time bombs in our bodies that we can maybe end up having some forms of cancer? So in our coverage today, we are going to be in position to define mitotic index and also be able to describe how it is determined. How do we work out this calculation? So we need to be born to marriage. Every time we go to hospitals and they show us those images and they're showing us these cells, especially when you are having any forms of suspicion of cancer or any kind of things, what type of tissues do they show you on the pictures? Do you just get the results and then walk away? Do you ever try to look at those images? Can you try to find out some bit of anomalies in some of the images, possibly with what you have learned before? It's not the first time you're seeing images of cells dividing. But when you go to the hospitals and they give you your medical results and forms and scanned images, what do they tell you? Do you remember to transfer that small knowledge, a little bit of it, you got from these topics? Cell division, you had it in your senior two, you had it in your senior three, then some bit of it. So now you're in area and you still go through the same thing again. What's the relevance of the topic to our daily lives? What do the figures tell us, which takes us to the importance of mitotic index? And then finally, we should be able to describe some bit of a connection between when cells wrongly divide and some forms of cancer, like the second part in our lesson topic. So without going any far into that, we go straight to our index now. There is something I want you to focus on very carefully. Look at the image on the top right and then bottom right of the slide. Follow the laser. It's cutting all the way through as a background image, but what does that tell you? Are we looking at cells? Is there some evidence of boundaries? that if we are to trace around this region and move around here and these other parts, are we able to take that this is possibly a boundary of one cell? And then we'll move on to the next of the parts. Can we see some anomalies? Could we be having a cell like this? Or one like this? Or this and all that? Why are some of these cells having unusual sizes of the nuclei? Could that be an anomaly? Why is it that in a given cell, the nucleus is smaller, and in other cells, the nucleus looks way bigger than the others? But if all these cells were to carry out activities, would they be running the same activities, under the same command, under the same design? So in the mitotic index, therefore, we are looking at uh, can we count the cells and then are we in position to see the ones that are dividing and the other ones that are not, which takes us back to the cell cycle. When do we have mitosis and when are we having interphase? 
So looking at the two components within the cycle of the cell, remember, interface, the longest period of time, and after the cell is going to divide. Then the other small component that we had as mitosis, mitotic division, nuclear division. So are we able to tell which cells are dividing and which cells are not? And then we kind of ratio the two. Cells in mitosis, meaning, check this out very well. Are we able to think about mitotic cell division evidently seen when we look at chromosomes? Not chromatin, but chromosomes. And then what about the other cells that are not dividing? Does it mean that they do not have chromosomes at all, or they have taken a different form in which we cannot say that they are dividing? So here we have the description, the ratio between the number of cells in mitosis, in a tissue, so it can be plant or animal, and the total number of all the cells under the slide, all the cells in the image, all the cells under consideration. Now, once we have seen this, what do we be from the picture? So here you have an outline of a few small things. Can this tell us if the cell is actually undergoing mitosis? Or it's resting like we said last time, but remember that scientifically, in the previous homework, we don't use that word. I'm not giving you the answers to the other homework. Two, if we had to look at the numbers of the cells in mitosis, looked at in terms of the chromosome numbers, and the positioning, you know, the way they align and then they start moving and then they reach certain positions. Can they tell us the rate in terms of if we keep monitoring this tissue over time? That every other hour we see the slide and then we're able to see the cells that are dividing based on the chromosomes arrangement. Can we tell that this tissue is actually not dividing or it is dividing at this space. Can we have some bit of estimation? What about the condition of the tissue? Is it actively dividing all the time, like meristems, plant roots, tips, or the terminal birds? Are there certain regions of the body that have actively dividing cells that at any one moment we are able to see cells in mitosis? And then we can base on that to tell, oh, yeah, the condition of the tissue is this. What about the damage, repairs? How fast are these cells forming compared to the other parts? What about tissues that are recovering? Ever had wounds? And every time you look at a scratch on your body, all the skin, and then you're able to see some component that looks like a bit fresh and younger than the other older part of the skin? Could these cells all be having the same activity? Now, when we talk of development of lamps, so some bit of correction, I get a pen and turn this into a U, so that the word reads as lamps. I think you're there, like some piles. Now, the question should be, when have we heard of words like cancers? Have we friends that have gone through that type of life? What comes to our mind? When does this happen? Is it sudden, boom, and then it starts? Or maybe there are time bombs when cell division is taking place and some small mistakes go on, uncorrected, remember, it's a whole collection of mechanisms and a lot of genes that are embedded. So it's the whole control system. Remember these documentaries that are always aired on TV and they say, ah, moments before disaster, National Geographic. And then they trace the problem of the plane crash right away from the time when the factory released a component, an engine, a section of the plane, and it flies years and years until when it crashes, they say, okay, investigation. 
The pirate has no reason to be taken to court. Everyone is saying everything looked okay, and they trace the error right away from the beginning when the plane was being manufactured. Meaning that this small problem has been graduating. Sorry to use the word, but it keeps adding. Default one, default two, level two, level three, until finally, brrr, nose dive, crash. Now, the interesting part here is, when we are to look at these displays and we look at the conditions of these tissues under observation, are we thinking of time bombs in our bodies? A time bomb is a countdown. So it keeps clocking, 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 clocking until we say, I didn't know that I have had cancer for almost five years. But at the time when it is seen after analysis and examination, um, the good thing is, blah, 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 but the bad news is you are cancerous. And you're level three. And you say, OK, you're finished. You break down. Do we have some warning signals that we have always ignored in our bodies? So this is an interesting part. When do we go for these tests? When we have wounds healing, just take it from the simplest. Do you monitor the way your wound heals? Are you seeing any anomalies? Are you seeing some small raised structures that do not look that the very part that the tissue is replacing during mitosis? Remember we say that it's for tissue replacement. Not adding a tissue on top of another tissue. You got that. So what else can we get from these pictures? Now, let's first do with the calculation, and then that can come afterwards, which takes us to the process of determining the numbers. I've used this picture because back home there, you can sit back and still be able to do the counting. So we have an expression telling us that we can look at the number of cells in mitosis, so we need now to start remembering and ask ourselves, uh, when is mitosis evident in a cell? And when do we say we are not in mitosis? Which takes us back to the cell cycle. Interphase, S, G, G1, and then mitosis, and then cytokinesis. All of those should be identifiable within the image. So let's start. We are going to count all the cells to get up for the number as the one down where the laser is. Total number of cells within the tissue. And then we also look at the number of cells in mitosis. Now let's go together. If we go through these images and I move from top left, I'm moving to top right, I go again. This is how you'd be able to check which cells you're going to meet. Chop! We reach one and we stop. If this is mitosis, then the question is what stage? Cell one, so we do the counting. That if we are able to get our pen and start highlighting, I have this, maybe I change the color. Let me see if we have an option for color. Um, let's use um, purple. Let's check. Right, it works. That is one, if we put a tick here. And we continue moving, and we have, I think this is dividing or not dividing. No, 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 no. So we erase this and remove that. Then we go back and pick our pen and check out which ink color we can use. Let's go yellow. This actually shows that the cell is dividing. This one is also in mitosis. So we keep moving as we count. Uh, which other? What if we just stop there and then we're able to have uh, cells as um, one, and uh, division, two, three, four. I possibly can't see any other. 
So it means that I would have four cells undergoing mitosis because the chromosomes are seen and they are rearranging. And then we count all the cells in the image. And then we should be able to get our expression. Meaning that, therefore, I can go for my pen and say, I think I have a four divided by, so we count all the cells. So we move. One, two, let me get a razor here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. Let's assume that maybe if you do simple counting, normal math, if I don't have to count them all, go longitudinal or horizontal, and then we go upwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, then one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Averagely, this can represent about um, six times six, uh, 36. Now, finally, I have my index by getting the answer. That's yours. Now, once we have had this, like I just talked about, we should be able to tell, ah, is it normal that every time I extract a tissue for study for a whole week, only one certain part of the cell is dividing and the others are not? And if so, what will happen if cells keep adding up? Which takes us to the next slide, and we are looking at when cells are undergoing normal division and when they are not. So let's look at the picture here. Normal cells undergoing division. What do you see? What about a cancer cell? How would we be able to tell a cancerous cell and a non-cancerous cell? A cell that has uncontrolled cell division? Could it be the size of the nucleus? Check that. Is it the possibility of the rearrangement of the cells once they have divided and then they have to keep as a tissue a group of cells? What about sticking together? like a lamp, ibjon, bikum, kuzamatafari, ujekuyot, sangwavemu, but every time you're lifting them and you put them together, they tend to kind of stick together. Could that be a fair representation of cells dividing like the way we have the bricks, but as they are drying, they again tend to connect with each other, and like we do have here? What about this? What about the shape? Is there a possibility of the, the cell membrane losing shape and structures that the cytoskeleton putting these cells together as a tissue is actually the problem? So, it is true, and we live with these errors. They do happen in every part of your body, every other minute. The good news is, we have certain special type of cells able to keep on the lookout. They patrol the body, they look for them, they punch them. We call them killer cells, if you can remember those components in immunity. And clear them out of the body. It's like you are a student at school and you are the one expected to be leading some small strikes within before a big strike comes out. Guess what? The head teacher writes a letter. Suspension, indefinitely, out of the gate. And they even pack your things and take them away. They send them to the gate. They even tell your parents, don't even come to school. Find your child at the gate. So when language has been used to say, I think you are a cancer in a community, that's the reference they're trying to talk about. A cell that does completely what is different from the rest of the cells. But we know that under normal conditions, we have these cells in the body dividing by mitosis and a variety of enzymes and genes with other mechanisms to make sure that the process is fully in control. So we have everything right on the spot. Now the question is, when do we start appearing as time bombs? When do errors start? For how long do we take before we can see them? Oncogenes stimulate cells to divide. 
tumor suppressor cells or genes, these, these tumor suppressing genes are already embedded in us. They ensure that there is no tumor that forms once cells are divided. But these two have to strike kind of a balance, like don't have a tumor forming, at the same time don't stop cells from dividing. Divide, you have an error, we clear you out. Which leaves us in some mysterious world, a world that has no clear definition, which takes us to uh, the tumors that do develop. What is the connection? Where do they come from? Is it because cell division has not worked out? Which takes us to this, the forms of tumors, the names that you've always heard of. How do they get these names and what is the reference? Now let's look at the background of the picture. Think about babies breastfeeding and then mothers. So with that hint, what do you think the image is actually trying to tell us? Ever heard of breast cancers? Can you look at the image and possibly see that if I went through this laser and flew in, it's like a black hole in space, and you go. This could be somewhere to the exit of the nipple, and then we have our mammary glands. Can this link us to what we've always heard about mothers and other people having some forms of cancers, breast cancer? So, you have very many causes of these cancers. And so we end up having different types of substances that are able to cause cancers, including viruses. Now, whether they are chemical or high energy radiations, atomic bomb emissions and X-ray and all stuff, all those things, strong waves of light, because the mutagens are agents that cause genes to change, resulting into cancers appearing. So, let's quick and move to some of these. A continuation. Look at the background of the picture. This is a structure that is extracted from the lungs. Now the question is, is this part really a section of the lung? If these are air sacs, is this also an air sac? What has happened? Ever heard of lung cancer? It all starts with mutation. But the question is, do all mutations result into cancer? That is left for you. And here we go. Abnormal groups of cells that develop at any stage in life at any part of the body. So you're going to say that I'll never have lung cancer, I'll never have cancer in the intestines, I'll never have cancer of the colon. Guys, this is like happening every minute, so we don't know when it will show up. Which takes us to these two images. You look at this section, and then there is a boundary. You have blood vessels. And here in the second image, the group, Jab John, the Kangurishi Jam clustered cells with wrong cell membranes are crossing over. Are they moving? Are they invading other tissues? In some cases, the cells adhere to each other and do not invade other tissues. And we now look at these as begging tumors. Then other forms of tumors, <laughs> they detach and they move. Ruhurura, Ibjon, Bikajenda, Bikavanu, Kabisanga, Yabarongo. Cells break down, they break off. Check the division. They are, it's like you're having a tissue into another tissue. So these cells that are dividing here are completely different from these good ones, and they are dividing. They divide so quickly, they eat a lot, they secrete a lot, and guess what happens? When they move and join the tissues into blood vessels, blood takes them away, and we now look at them as having to move from where they develop and now turn into secondary tumors. And very likely to be life-threatening. If here a person has suffered from cancer, and they're saying, it's now in the backbone, it has eaten away my bones, now I can't sit up, it's now in the head, then in the legs, those are migrating tissues. Which takes us 
to mutations and cancer. What's the connection? Every other time we are having some errors. Remember what we talked about DNA replication? One base out of a million incorporated can be advantageous at the same time, very dangerous. Not all of them cause cancer. So not all mutations do cause cancer. Remember the X-Men movies. Now you can remember. Some can become cancer-causing after mutating as oncogens, while others, we actually tend to benefit. While we have errors with sickle cells and these individuals able to resist malaria, but they also have their own side effects. So mutations in cells can result into uncontrolled division and therefore a tumor can form. So, where is the graduation? From nursery, primary, secondary, and then tertiary? We don't know. So these tumors are also categorized depending, one, on the origin, two, the stage, and three, the form of the tissue they are attacking. And sometimes we can also be in position to look at them in terms of what causes them. Like we said again, this is a lung tissue and you have a tumor forming here. Several mutations must occur in the same cell. So not just a small mutation and then we have, boom, it has started. It must be so much to be able to bring that danger. But the chances are so minimal. That's the lucky part of it. But once it has formed, <laughs> the, the process of division is so quick, so fast, and controlled that we have cells rapidly growing up and then we have boom, bulge. And then we have a primary tumor. Then metastasis, they now move and join other parts of the body. Think about it. Sometimes we get scared to think about these things, but we also need to look at how do we avoid this. So with this, as you take a caption of your homework, reflect. What, am I, what lifestyle am I leading that is actually causing all that? And do I have a chance to avoid it? So as you go through that, as you take the clip for the homework, we say the lesson ends now. But think about the time bomb. Thank you for today.